Hello, good evening, and welcome to a very special Thursday edition of the Tea Room. Let me introduce to the panel we have tonight. We have Palm, Night Wrist Watchman. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Tickers. Good evening, all. We have Red Shovel. Hello, Red Shovel. Good evening, everyone. And we have Cherry Time Watches. Hello, Al. Good evening, everyone. Good to be back. Okay. And tonight we have a very, very special guest. We have Mike France, the CEO of Christopher Ward. Good evening, Mike. Good evening. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Thank Good evening, you very Mike. much for, for joining mm -hmm. us in the tea room. So what I'd like to ask you, Mike, is please could you um, just give us a bit of uh, background about yourself and uh, your involvement, please, in the uh, Christopher Ward company? Sure. Um, as you said, I'm uh, the CEO and uh, one of the uh, three co-founders, along with... Uh, Chris Ward and um, Peter Ellis of, uh, of Christopher Ward. Um, my background is really, I'm, a, I'm I suppose I'm a, um, a retail lifer. Um, I've done my time mainly in um, some quite large blue chip organizations where I was um, fortunate, to, fortunate enough to join the boards of a number of big uh, retail businesses such as um, as it was called in my day, the Burton Group, um, then Storehouse, and became the buying director of, uh, of BHS when it was a successful business. Um, and then was fortunate enough to um, to land the, the task of turning a company called Early Learning Centre around, which had been a sort of a retail phenomenon, but had, in the mid-90s hit upon some quite hard times. And uh, Peter and I went in there to, um, to turn it around, which... Uh, despite our efforts, we managed to do. Um, so <laughs> lucky again. And uh, we um, we were able to sell that um, in 2004. Uh, and um, uh, after about a month of um, lying on a beach, um, uh, I decided, uh, although I was, I was probably in, I was my late 40s at the time. Um, this is 2004. Um, uh, I think we're on this earth to be productive. So um, um, what are we going to do next? And so uh, ultimately landed on um, watches, um, knowing absolutely nothing about, apart from liking watches, knowing absolutely nothing about the sector. But um, hey-ho, that's the challenge of life, isn't it? So, um, um, and um, we uh, we set up um, what at the time um, was the first online-only watch brand. Um, of course, we've been joined by one or two others since, um, and we're still um, we're still um, we're still here. Uh, Chris left a few years ago. Um, Peter and I are still very much at the helm of the business, um, and the business is now um, the largest by volume mechanical watch manufacturer in the United Kingdom. Um, is uh, is our biggest uh, market is the United States. Uh, we have serious ambitions um, to grow in both the US and, and further afield. Uh, and um, probably I've never had so much fun in my life as the last 15 or so years. It's been uh, it's been always a challenge. Uh, you guys understand and know the watch industry. And uh, probably if uh, yeah, if we had our time again, um, and if the um, if the question was, uh, what's the easiest way to make a living in the uh, the next 20 years, the answer would not be start a watch brand. But um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be. You never know. <laughs> well, it might be. Um, but 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 one of the more interesting and fascinating places to uh, to to run a you know, a business uh, it certainly is, and uh, it has been a um, a journey of discovery and continues to be. Um, I think we're all probably the same. If you're, you're learning some. If you're learning something new virtually every day, then um, you're probably yeah. in not a bad place, and that's how I feel about uh, Christopher Ward. Brilliant. Th thank, thank you, Mike. So, just one thing. I'm going to go off script here. Sorry, Mike. It's okay. <laughs> when Chris left the company, Christopher Ward actually left Christopher Ward, the company. How, what, how big a challenge was that for you? Um, not really very big at all. I mean, Chris, I, I, Chris had not really been involved in the business in any considered way for quite a few years. Um, <laughs> Um, and um, <clears throat> the reason it's called Chris Ward is because that's the name I came up with. Because it, we had—I've uh, <laughs> told this story before, but so stop me if it's if it's um, 
If I'm no, no, future. please do go on. But um, um, like all new businesses, you know, the, one of the first challenges that you set yourself is, well, come up with a name. And so uh, we were no different. And uh, the first uh, name that we, um, we rested upon was MPC. Um, which was Mike, Pete, and Chris. Really imaginative that, um, but um, hmm. but we thought that was a bit too close to IWC. Um, then it was going to be a <laughs> this. this <laughs> um, we didn't want any litigation. Uh, then um, <laughs> then um, uh, we were going to call it. Um, and this sounds rather Dickensian in hindsight. Uh, Fennel and Worswick, which oh, also right. sounds like some sort of. Um, uh, potions company doesn't Harry it? Potter type well, Harry Potter yeah. <laughs> yeah. Harry Hogwarts <laughs> Hogwarts Fennel and Worswick and the reason for Fennel and Worswick is um, my wife's maiden name is Fennel and Peter's wife's maiden name is Worswick okay. and so uh, we were going to be called Fennel and Worswick but then we 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 took the potion ourselves and realized that was rather too um, rather not rather too potential. um and um, we were struggling. And what we didn't want was some sort of confection name. You know, we didn't want to invent a name that was, at the time, back in the early, um, the early noughties, if you recall, you know, companies were calling themselves the most bizarre sort of, the dot-com era had, had sort of come yeah. and uh, rested itself upon us. And, you know, if, if, if your company wasn't called Monday afternoon um, tea break, it was not a uh, it was not fashionable so uh, so there were all of these ludicrous names knocking about and we didn't we wanted not to have that sort of um, approach and uh, wanted something that meant something that was real uh, and then i i remember it vividly we were in a we were actually in a bar in london somewhere and um, I, we were we'd been arguing the toss about it for for too long and i said look um i'll tell you what we're going to call it uh, we're going to call it um, christopher ward is that all right, Chris? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> oh, really, <laughs> and uh, because it sounded English, and it scans, yes. it scans beautifully, and it was real. And the original intention of the business was that, um, at the very early stages, was that Peace and I we were going to put all the money in, and of course the genius, and Chris was going to do all the hard work. Um, so Peter and I put all the money in, and then we found out we were doing a lot of the hard work as well. <laughs> oh, right, okay. So, uh, but that's why the company was called Chris Ward, and uh, uh, it was great. And Chris was great in the early days and contributed enormously to the business. But uh, for quite a few years, as I say, it was um, he, he'd not really been um, significantly involved. So, no, it, from our perspective, it was no major uh, challenge. Then, really. it, was, it was it was business business as usual, really. Okay, great. All right. Okay, so I'm going back to the script now. So, what we're going to do. <coughs> is going to have two questions each from our illustrious panel here for yourself all okay. pre-prepared and you know all good questions yeah. nice questions so uh john okay. would you like to fire yeah. away with your question yes certainly I, i'd like to know mike please uh, is there anything at this stage you may have uh, done differently now you think about it i.e maybe just not selling online only like you did and maybe taking it to to I mean, the boutique or other shops or anywhere like that you know um, no, I don't think so. No, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm stridently, um, stridently um, online only. Um, we couldn't do what we do if we um, a had a wholesale model, which right. is typical of the rest of the industry. So, I mean, essentially, the, uh, and I know this is sort of, it sounds rather trite, but it, 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 it actually happens to be the truth. Um, if we were selling in the model of most, you know, 99.9% .9 of our competitors. Um, the minimum price you would pay for any Chris Ward would be at least double what you currently pay. And um, so I often quote um, Oris as being, I'm a big fan of Oris um, in lots of different ways. They do, a, they do an excellent job. Um, and um, we share quite a lot of manufacturing with Oris, like quite oh, a lot. I see. Okay. Um, <laughs> um and i think we've got some i think we're a bit more imaginative in our engineering and a bit braver but um, i have huge respect for what oris has achieved um essentially any oris watch you know or any chris ford watch double the price of and that's what oris would charge you and oris are really competitive you know they're about the closest mainstream competitor to because their quality is excellent you know i, I know where they manufacture things because we often manufacture in the same place. I know the standards and the tolerances that they work to, which are way above, way above um, 
many many other brands who sell at a much higher price than Norris. But essentially, you will all any any equivalent um, Chris Ward line to sort of you know whether it's a sort of a, a dive watch or a chronograph, or whatever. You know, we'll we'll always be half their price, and the the reason for that is just the model. Um, we don't have to pay a retailer uh, fifty percent of our margin, and give them fifty percent no. margin to sell. Um, no. So. Um, because uh, right at the core of what we're about and right from the from the very start what we were about was really trying to i suppose prick the bubble of the swiss watch industry um the online model um allows us to do that um, we could have grown faster um, because if you can open lots of doors on lots of high streets across the world you can get volume much quicker it's quite hard um to grow a um an online business because you have no passing trade you have to go and find it yeah um so uh, we could have grown a lot faster but actually I, I i think part of me would really like to have grown faster but i think as i look back it's better that we grew more organically because we made some huge mistakes in the early years yeah um well, we didn't know what we were doing largely um and um you know we've 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 learned um and if you're half decent and i'd like to think we're half decent and we we're reasonably intelligent human beings and we care about what we do and then if you absorb the things that you learn along the way and you work through the errors and turn them into positives then i think you end up with a much more fundamentally strong business and so our strength of one of the great strengths of the chris ford brand is it's rooted in some really strong principles and some strong understanding and knowledge um, and that isn't always the case in the watch industry um, it's pretty easy to set up a watch brand i call them the rowenta brands um, fine watches but most of the most of the brands that um, arrive or have a, a arrived on the scene in recent years most of them go through one of two importing companies in switzerland um, they all use exactly the same. Many of them outsource even the designing to big companies who then source in not the highest grade of factories and did it. So I, I call them the Rowenta is one of the companies. They're a fine company in their own right, but they're not to the standard that we would um, that we have. Um, and so unless you have, I think that's the thing that we've got. We've got real expertise and knowledge now, and we've we've learned the hard way because we, we did make some mistakes along the way brilliant wow thank you and i'd really love to know we wanted to actually know this for ages uh why did it take us so long to, to to remove the um the christopher ward name off the dial because the input i get generally what i found is more people like it now when it's been removed a friend of mine's got 19 yeah. christopher wards um he loves them he's after his 20s right? <laughs> no, yeah one. seriously uh and he always thinks it looks better now with without the christopher ward on it so i know there's a story behind that please yes um i'm pleased to say uh, he, he didn't seem to be alone uh, on average okay. we're, we're going through the process the aquatame is the first um um collection that carried just the twin flags logo um, yes. we're now introducing them on an ongoing basis as we as we go through um you know the the old um the old dials that's right and ebay is full of ones newish ones now with the with the, with the name on it are the that, yeah that's yeah so some of them are gonna, yeah, yeah so, uh, some of them are going to become collector's items i think but uh, um the uh since we since that uh, as as we change from old to new um we're getting an average of a 25 percent increase in sales um, wow and in wow. one case wow, really brilliant. yeah and in one case it's double um so um it does seem that um it's thus far it's uh, it's a call that's worked um it's a call that we wanted to make um back in 2016 um we uh, introduced our new sort of branding and approach in 20 in may of 2016 and the original idea back when we were planning it with our design agency in 2015 mid 2015 um we had wanted to go twin flags only then um however um although to your eye and my eye um 
you know, there is absolutely no way that um, anybody could misinterpret our twin flags approach with a Swiss flag approach, let's say, of a very large, um, very large brand owned by the Swatch Group um, called Tiso. <laughs> um yeah. then um, our lawyers because you have to you know as you will be well aware in your own business lives um you know we we obviously went through our lawyers and tested everything out to make sure it was it was perfectly uh, legal and their advice to us at the time was look we think you'd win a case because you're clearly not passing off against tiso um but just bear in mind that these organizations have dozens of law firms across the world and their only remit is to litigate against anybody and everybody they think is um, st stepping in their territory. And so you'd probably win in the end if you're prepared to spend quite a lot of money to fight them. And you'd probably end up spending half your working life fighting this case over several years. Is that something you're prepared to do? Well, clearly the answer was no. So their advice was for a period of time, i.e. five years, actually, um, they suggested we ran both the Christopher Ford name and the Twin Flags logo in tandem on the dial. And after five years in, uh, if, without any challenge of any of this, um, then it would be, it, right. it, 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 you know, nobody was, nobody would even dare challenge. So we took the advice, um, and, um, and, uh, and, um, as soon as the five years had elapsed, we, um, we started to prepare for, um, the twin flags only logo. So our swish only moment was uh, was was five years <laughs> after it was intended, really. But um, right, there. right, excellent, excellent. Thank it's you. Good brilliant. Move, I think as well, personally. Yeah, yes, definitely. brilliant. Yes, seriously, absolutely. Yes. Well, th I'm glad you like it. And as, as I say, mm. um, it seems that it's thus far, I mean, you never know, but thus far, it's been a really it's had yeah. a really positive response like you say 25 so yeah, and 50 percent on another 50%. model that, that's, yeah. which model which model may i ask which model is on the 50 percent, please it's actually double it's 100 percent. it's had a it's double oh. it's um, doubled it's turnover. it's uh it, i'll tell you um it's the sealander gmt oh wow excellent. oh yeah oh, well yeah. Uh, cherish time watches has one of those on his wrist actually. yes, yes I, I love it one of the, he has one of those <laughs> yes certainly he loves it Thank you very much I'll for answering that, Mike. Move on to my two questions now, Mike. For you. All right. So. Um, first of all, this question, uh, just to let you know, I, over, over the years, I have now got a really good appreciation of Crystal Ward. My favorite is the super compressor. And one day I will pull the trigger on that because it's just got that really cool 60s, 70s kind of vibe. To you it. and me as well. Really I'm after one of yeah. them. Yes. And John yeah. is as well. But um, <laughs> so my initial question was so I can first remember seeing. Christopher Ward advertised in the BA High Life magazine. That's where I first right. looked. We should travel yeah. a lot before the pandemic and not really thinking much of the brand because it didn't sing to me. Yeah. And then the other day I was watching something on Sky Sports and I saw your television advert Yes. Uh, during a commercial break and I thought, wow, that's quite a big shift in commercial awareness <laughs> media. How did that? So how did that shift come about? And are there any challenges you face in advertising at that level and do you see your, you know any other mediums you could possibly use um yeah I mean, um let's uh we've been on tv since may 2020 and um okay i didn't know um, you're speaking yet, so sorry so you're not watching enough TV, Paul. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Too much YouTube. That's what it is. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, and the reason we went on TV in the first instance, quite interesting, because um, it was May 2020, which, as we all know, was um, a couple of months after the uh, the pandemic hit. And yep. up until that point in the UK, um, our prime advertising was was through magazines, newspapers. BA High Life was, as many people came across us for the first time in BA High Life. Of course, they all had stopped. There was no printed media at all um, in uh, back in April and May of uh, no travel either. Yeah. No travel either. So uh, even if uh, even if there had been, um, so um, uh, I suppose our philosophy, my philosophy, um, we were all, I think, um, one hearts back to those dark days at uh, March the twenty third in the UK, certainly. Uh, we were all um, pretty frightened about what this might mean. And we certainly didn't know what the ultimate result of the pandemic would be. Um, 
what we determined very quickly um, was that we, whatever else was we were going to do or not do, we weren't going to allow the brand to go dark. Um, so whilst we had lost the opportunity of communicating um, through the traditional channels we'd used overnight, um, we wanted actually, always, always in difficult times, if you're brave enough and you're not stupid, yeah. and there are opportunities to grow market share. And um, I saw this as an opportunity because I knew everybody else is likely to pull back and stop advertising at all, which is exactly what happened. And so we said, well, okay, we can't advertise through any other route. More people are now watching television than ever before. In fact, the, the actual number of people watching TV in April and May 2020 had gone up by 45%. The number of hours they're watching had gone up by 45% because virtually everybody had pulled the plug on advertising at that time. The rates had dropped by 45%. So not only were you getting the biggest audiences in a generation, you were also getting the lowest prices in a generation. Okay. Genius. Wow. So Genius. The, the challenges Genius. I was talking about. Okay. That is, yeah. Right. Brilliant. Yeah. Very, very clever. So, so, yeah. so we decided um, to create a TV ad. And I'm very, I'm quite proud of the fact that in April of um, 2020, we were the only, us and the hate and Her Majesty's government were the only two brands if we can call the government a brand um <laughs> uh, the only two brands in the or organizations in the uk producing a new tv commercial at the time um and we had to do it all in studio it was quite incredible how the team because we were all i mean we all thought we were going to catch covid and die at the time so the the, the distances the the way in which the 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 camera men operated the boom operators up it was absolutely brilliant all in a studio in um, in soho in london and we in five weeks from nothing we were on tv and um in that year we grew the business when everybody the the i think in 2020 into 21 the the watch market declined by on average um 40% and we grew by 30%. So we, we, we acquired a significant amount of market share. Um, so we've, we've got some, we've got some knowledge now about TV and uh, we, um, I won't tell you precisely because it would be um, competitive, competitively advantage to our competition. Um, but we, um, we, we, um, we do have a we have quite a smart way and a very cost effective way of uh, of um of doing tv advertising uh, wow. and um it, we're back on now and we intend to be back on um for quite some considerable time because yeah, sky is not cheap i'm sure <laughs> um you'd be surprised be actually <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's 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 all about if you know your audience and you can pinpoint which programs which channels are right for your audience you know and therefore you know we are we are after by and large curious minded men yeah and curious minded men and i'm certain i'm talking to four here um tend not to be necessarily watching things like coronation street um, so, um, <laughs> well, one of them does. That, 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 oh, I that, do. Well, that, 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 yeah, that, I'm, I'm northern. I'm northern. It's in the northern it's in blood. It's illegal, it's illegal for me not to. But in the daytime, I have Sky News on in the background. Yeah. When I work from home, I've got Sky News on in the background. And I've yeah. heard your advert on Sky News as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah it's not yeah. just sports. So it's got, I've got Sky News on, and I hear it in the background a few times. Yeah. So you're so hearing it's Sky News. Pinpointed. Yeah, it's quite pinpointing yes. it, and, it, and it, it, uh, it works for us. And But that's not the only avenue. I mean, we've, um, we've just recently, um, we've just recently um, um, joined forces, become uh, the official global timing partner of Everton Football Club. I did um, see that, actually. Right, yeah. And um, that's a, a big step change for us and a very great opportunity. I mean, when you look at the numbers associated with uh, the number of people and families who watch Premier League football across the world. As I said earlier on, our ambition is global. Um, 
uh, you know, the United States is already our biggest market. Um, we're growing really quickly wow. in Asia. And it seems to the, the, the opportunity, NBC, for instance, have just spent 2.7 billion in the States to acquire all of the Premier League games. Um, you will know as well as I that in China, Hong Kong, et cetera, most of Southeast Asia, I mean, every game is on and they have huge audiences. I think last year, um, something like 843 million people watched Everton's games live, never mind all of the highlight programs, etc. So this is a, a great opportunity for us to get um, global reach um, and get the brand awareness levels up because uh, to try and do that via TV or, um, or, or other avenues can be horrifically expensive. So uh, uh, we're very hopeful that um, the, um, the Everton sponsor, which has only just started, you know, we, we've signed a, a five-year deal. Um, and we're in for the long haul, provided they remain in the Premier League. <laughs> yeah. It was close last season. It was close last season. Well, we, we, we already had the deal in place, of course, and uh, yeah. uh, that was a that was an interesting, as well as uh, the 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 people in the commercial department at, Ever at Everton who were obviously concerned for their jobs. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we were concerned that the deal would uh, would um, founder at the final hurdle. But uh, good old Calvert Lewin, um, his head oh, There you go. Yeah. Gonna, I, I owe are you a, a fan? Are you? Is there a reason why? I, I, well, they approached us, um, okay. and we, we have actually been approached by I think it's eleven Premier League clubs over the years, wow. Um, oh, wow. and we've turned each of them down. Um, we, a in many cases, it was too early in our development, and it was too expensive um, for where we were. Um, so people like Manchester City approached us uh, ten years ago. Um, Liverpool. Have approached us aston villa chelsea arsenal um southampton wow. tottenham um tottenham, tottenham yeah any there's a top we have a tottenham fan tottenham, in the house tottenham fan yeah that's me yeah there you go <laughs> well you know why would we want why would we want to be associated with spurs i mean just no chance um peter peter's up <laughs> that's peter, the end of peter the super ellis. compressor peter, yeah, <laughs> peter ellis is a big spurs fan yeah um, wow. yeah okay Everton approached us at the right time for the brand, um, at the right sort of cost level for us. But also, and it, it, this is really important to us, um, they are, they've been announced, uh, I think recently, as the most socially responsible sports brand in the world. Um, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and as an Evertonian, I, I, my father took me to my first Everton game when I was three. So I'm, I'm fairly well versed in. Evertonia. Uh, it is, at, although most football clubs now, most major sports clubs across the world have foundations of some sort or another, charitable foundations, which is great stuff. Everton were the first and it's ingrained in everything they do. Everton in the community, EITC, is an astonishing charity that they've run for 35 years, well before anybody, it became fashionable. Um, they run schools, they run drop-in centres, they run drug rehabilitation centres. It's quite incredible what they do for one of the poorest communities in Europe. Liverpool 4, where Everton is based, is one of the poorest communities in Europe. And they take their social responsibility incredibly seriously. And so part of what we will be involved in, we'll, we want to be and will be involved in Everton in the community. And so it was this, I'm not saying that was the first and prime reason that we wanted to align with Everton it was obviously a commercial reason but actually the reason we decided ultimately to go with Everton was because of their absolutely profound um, caring for their community and uh, we want to play our own small part in that. Excellent brilliant great great to hear so I have one more question I have to rush this one because uh, other panelists have some excellent questions I've only got an hour but um obviously thanks for that the answer on that it, brilliant uh so who do you consider your closest rival in the market and how do you feel you're at, and do you feel you're ahead level or behind them plus if you are ahead level or behind how do you plan to keep or create daylight between them and christopher ward so who <laughs> do you think is your biggest rival are you ahead level or behind or and if you are ahead or behind how do you plan to stay that way well, so, well overtake or keep ahead 
Okay. Um, I don't want to be. I I I I, I try and give very straight answers. Um, this is going to sound like a bit of an obfuscation, I think, but. Uh, um, I don't think there is one particular rival that we focus on. Uh, well, I know there isn't. Um, yeah. um, we watch the market very carefully. Um, we are unusual as a brand in that um, often because of people like yourselves, um, for a what would be considered an entry-level brand in price terms, um, we actually are able to play well up the scale in terms of horological terms. So lots of aficionados, um, quite serious watch collectors who've got you know everything from you know Richard Mule, Patex, you name it. They're very happy to have a Chris Ward in the collection. One of my proudest moments, uh, and was was when you know Roger Smith bought one of our watches. Um, oh, wow. Roger, Roger doesn't buy Amazing. watches. So he's your biggest rival then, Roger Smith. Yeah, I think I think Roger is. <laughs> I think yeah. Roger is our biggest rival. And yeah. He'd, he'd be very amused. He'd be very. Amused that record him. that. Yeah. You heard it first <laughs> on the ticket show. You heard it first. Yeah. Um, so, uh, um, you know, we've we've become good friends, Roger and I, over the over the years, and uh, we established the um, the alliance of British watchmen clockmakers together because of that friendship and 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 a real desire to see the uh, the british watchmaking industry you know rejuvenate itself um, excellent yeah. so um i don't see one individual brand i see a collection of brand the market where is the market and how do we fit into that market and whilst you have to keep an eye on what the competition is doing and we do um and uh, that some people will be ahead of you all way you know some people are going to be doing things better than you some people are going to be doing things worse than you the thing that we will always focus on is our product and our product development and um, for a brand of our relatively small size um, I don't think anybody of our size has the for the good fortune to have the level of expertise we have at our disposal and um, as I say there are many brands that you might think are around as in price but I describe them as Rowenta brands yeah. Anybody who knows watches and gets one of those brands, puts them against an equivalent competition award, you will know why they're not really direct competition. Now, that's not being arrogant, because um, I hate that sort of arrogance, um, but it, 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 it sometimes needs to be said because it's not always obvious when we're, you're an online brand, the level of quality and the level of detailing, the level of finishing that we deliver. And it's often only when people receive their first ever Christopher Award, um, having taken the risk, if you like, that they really begin to understand. The brand. And so this is why it's been an organic build, um, because essentially it's ultimately whatever advertising we do, we want people to pull the trigger on the first watch, to, but then it becomes word of mouth. And people talk about Christopher Ward because the ownership experience of a Christopher Ward I honestly believe, and I may be misguided, um, I honestly believe is, is amongst the best, if not the best, value for money watch ownership in the world of watches today. And so that's what we set out to do. We make mistakes from all the time. Um, we try as hard as we can to deliver the very best product we can. And I'm very fortunate that we've managed to assemble a team of highly talented, highly committed people who buy into the sort of philosophy that we were about. Um, and so um, I do think uh, we stand alone. Um, that sounds really arrogant. And I, and I, I no, no, no. I, I've, I've seen a couple of, handled a couple of your watches and a couple of guys on the yeah. panel have owned them. Um, and the quality is just it is phenomenal. Yeah. Sam, Sa Sam, watch, Sam Speak yeah. handed what Sam Speak handed one yeah. to her. Uh, Someone of note in the watch industry who's never handled one, who's handled more Rolex than they've had for dinners, and he was incredibly impressed when he had never handled one before. It was the and he was he was impressed. Yeah, I mean, just, uh, yeah the bezel clicks on the diver yeah. was just like so submariner. Yes, it was just unbelievable. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you may have heard that. You know, 
the guys we, we we push I mean, my job is to push people to to deliver things that they didn't think they could deliver um if i've got any role at all um and uh, i've got a team of people as i say very fortunately who respond always respond to the challenge and um really care about what they do and love the challenge you know and watchmaking like everything but watchmaking is a particular challenge you you you, you can't just pitch up and um and 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 really understand watchmaking and therefore to have our operation in switzerland um sets us apart um you the four the five of us tomorrow could quite easily go and set up a watch brand um i'll take you to the place we can do it you put a few bob in um i'll guarantee we won't we will we'll reach up if we do a decent job we'll reach a level within 12 to 24 months and we won't move beyond that level and then we will start dying after that and that's the sort of life cycle of loads and loads of watch brands um because they've outsourced everything yeah they've outsourced everything um and i think there's a outsourcing was a huge trend in industry um for many years still is and it's still appropriate to outsource some elements but outsourcing technical expertise if you're really serious about the watch industry you have to have technical in-house expertise otherwise you're just going to be a rewenta brand yeah okay. exactly Excellent. yeah right i'm conscious of time now so i'll move my questions on and it's to red as you want to call him mike <laughs> i'm like a I'd red rather, I'd rather call me blue <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, blue of course oh, blue. Please. Oh, thank you <laughs> i read on your website that one of the reasons why you started christopher ward was because you had discovered that and in particular one switch watch brand was marking up 34 times in terms of yes. manufacturing cost. Yes, yes. And that you wanted to keep that at a level of three times, you know, yes. to give customers value. Do you think in these sort of economic times, everything's everything's going up in price? I run a I run a business too. The costs are going up every single day, it seems. Do you think you'll have to sort of change that ratio or raise prices? No, I mean, um, not at all, Red. I mean, the... Um we've had to we've had to like like your company um and like every watch company i'm aware of we, we've had to increase our price we did so in april by about an average of six six point two percent um the uh but but we still apply um that's only because the cost prices went up we still apply the same multiple um which is a retail essentially it's a volume retailers multiple so i was brought up in um as i say in the burton group in bhs uh, in little woods in these places um where it was all own label um and therefore um we multiplied the margins that essentially all of these businesses operated under mark dispenser as well was um three times which gave you if you were doing your job properly a reasonable profit um and covered your overheads but meant that you were sharp on price yeah mm -hmm. um in fact, if we take the fashion example, so the chain stores, as they used to be called, were all operating at around about the three times multiple. Um, then you'd have the brands and they would be sold either in their own shops or in departmental stores. And those brands, let's take uh, let's take um, let's take the one I'm wearing at the moment. Let's take Ralph Lauren. Yeah, I used to buy shirts from the same manufacturer uh, as Ralph Lauren. Yeah, um, company at the time called Unimix in Hong Kong. Um, I know the guy who owned it, really great guy, um, Chris Cheng, one of the wealthiest people in Asia, um, but a really great guy, really good, really good art collector as well. Anyway, that's an aside. Um, he made on the same lines, using the same fabrics for Ralph Lauren, exactly the same shirts quality wise. If I was selling those to my customers for 20 pounds, Ralph Lauren, because they have the, the logo, was selling the same shirts for £80. Yeah. So and that's what's been going on in all parts of retailing and branding forever. But in, in the watch industry, we found it to be a little bit like the perfume industry. Um, it was outrageous. In some cases, it was outrageous. And we felt um, 
because we're, we were all the three of us were good northern lads um and my mum who sadly passed away last year you know she'd be always sat on my shoulder saying how much are michael you know <laughs> how much how much is how much is that you know? um and so value for money was always i think um embedded in what we tried to do and it was part of our background and you know whilst i think there is a value to have a brand logo if you that's what you value when you're marking something up that cost you, let's say, £100 to £3,400, then I think that's taking the Michael and is verging on the immoral. And we found lots of examples. And they, by the way, this was in China and they were claiming they were um, Swiss made. So, <laughs> so, so in that wow. journey of discovery, when we entered this, this, this marketplace, this industry we knew nothing about, we were very lucky that we knew people um, because of our backgrounds and we were given access to the watch industry that some people still wouldn't have. Um, and we learned stuff that probably might have taken a lifetime to learn within weeks. And what we learned is is there were, there were some great watches out there, but actually um, there were some great tales being told and some great margins being made. And we thought that there was an opportunity to do something different to offer true value for money um, and for a long time people just assumed that you know we were selling fakes that, that, that these that what we were saying wasn't true because whilst there are more examples of lower price uh, higher value watch brands these days back in 04 05 there weren't any really um, and so um, people assumed that if it wasn't being sold at a high price then it can't be real um, um eventually as i say through word of mouth and seeing some really great good fortune from um times uh, one of the big posters on timezone.com who, who broke open one of our watches and confirmed what we were saying was absolutely true and um, we we've been the beneficiary of, uh, of 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 that sort of word of mouth um so it was just uh, uh you know we we found it um almost morally abhorrent what was going on and um, mm -hmm. That's what's what we decided to do for, for good or ill. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Your second. This is my second, and I maybe should have left this day in, but I'll ask you now anyway, because I always like sort of asking asking people who own companies what they what, you know what other you know what other brands of watches do you perhaps own, uh, you know, and maybe were and enjoy too, apart from your own. Yeah, sure. Um, I tend to buy um, vintage. Um, yes. I, 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 yes. um, I, I was um, sort of, I, I'm a fan of, um, for a long time, I was a fan of contemporary IWC watches. Before I mm -hmm. got into Chris Ward, I was a sort of an IWC fan. Um, I think they went through then a difficult patch. I think they're beginning to come out of that now, um, which I'm pleased to, pleased to see. Um, but but essentially, um, you know, old Omega Constellation. You know, I've, I've got um, you know some some vintage watches that um, old Omegas. That's a thing um, that, that I I personally prefer to um, to to contemporary competitor watches because it 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 probably doesn't feel right to me to be wearing a, a brand new <laughs> a, a brand new Breitling or a or, yeah. or, or, or a brand. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? I just, I just, yeah. I'm never going to no. do that. No. Um, so, and I don't like watches that just sit in a sit in a safe or something. So, um, no. Um, so, I, it tends to be, uh, to tends to be vintage is my route. Wow! Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Great. Great answer. Yeah. So we'll move on to our friend from the United States, yes. Cherish Time Watches. All right. So, Mike, pleasure meeting you. So I'm going to kind of piggyback on uh, Red a little bit. So as you know, as a community, we are beyond passionate about watches. Even when I get a watch, you know, I drive everybody crazy because I'm like, what's the next watch? You know, what, what am I getting next? I have to get another watch. So when did you, if you remember, I want to ask you a particular question about yourself. When did you first become passionate about watches? And do you remember your first timepiece? Uh, I do remember my first time piece, which was when I was seven. Uh, for my seventh birthday, I, I was given a time act, um, nice. which by my parents, which um, which I remember proudly, um, proudly wearing. Um, I got a, I got a my first two wheeler bike, 
and a Timex for my seventh birthday, and that seemed to I seem to have arrived then somehow. Um, <laughs> a man. <laughs> I, I, I had the transport to get the get to places on time. You know, that's, uh, I love it. That was that was um, uh, the 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 next moment, and this is very typical um, of, of people who get into watches. The next moment um, uh, for me was uh, on my uh, 18th birthday. When again, my parents bought me a, um, a Tissot Sea Star. Um, nice. and, um, oh, wow. That was my first mechanical watch. Um, and I've still got that. It's, um, wow. Excellent. Um, it, actually, it's, it's in for a service at the moment. Um, I, I, I was just about to pull it out and show you that uh, it's in for a service. Um, I love it. Um, so I, and I, still, I still love that watch. Um, um, Beyond that, um, I went through a period, a long period, where um, I wouldn't say I was passionate about watches for watches' sake. I was, uh, I always, um, always wore a watch. Um, it was, um, it was, and I, I, I would wear watches that I was in the fashion industry for a long time. And so I tended to wear watches that I thought worked with whatever the, whatever the outfit I was wearing was and whatever. Right, right. And I was into trends. I was, you know, I was fashion I was watches. My life, I was living my life on the edge. You know? um, <laughs> I, I was, I was into trends and uh, um, front row seats and all that sort of stuff. And therefore yeah. um, the look of a watch was as much as, as anything. And it was only when we um, were thinking about where did we want to go next after when PJ and I had sold VLC, uh, we wanted to go, what, what did we want to do next? It, occurred to me that um, there'd been this latent interest in watches. Um, I'd bought a few IWCs and this sort of stuff. And uh, um, and um, there was there was a both a logical side to us, which said we wanted to be, we wanted an online only business. We wanted it to be global. Um, therefore, if you're going to have a global online business, best it's not sofas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so, it, and we did. We didn't. We, we didn't want to be busy fools. So we didn't want it to be ten pound t shirts. Um, right. So high value, relative small volume, something that we're interested in. It narrows the field down quite dramatically. And it watches, does, sure. watches popped out, and we went. Well, what do we know about watches? Well, well, we like watches. We and I used to love. And yeah, and I've bought. What if we go and investigate this world? And it was really during that discovery period, and I'm sure maybe the same for you, when you, the more you learn about watches and watchmaking and the industry itself, despite all of those nonsenses that were going on, actually the art of watchmaking yes. is just so profoundly interesting and exciting that you just get sucked into it, yeah? Mm -hmm. And it just sucks all of us in. And that's, I think, what keeps us wanting to, keep looking for the next watch and learning more about every single watch we can and so it was really the real passion for watches only properly developed after we started christopher wood if i'm absolutely honest yeah right. wonderful. interesting yeah wow. and i feel the same i you know it's like having a, a little machine a living breathe not breathing but a living thing on your wrist it, it really does it's a, oh, it's, it's a magical it's, it's feeling incredible. It's, I mean, still today, you know, I've used this line to a few people that you know, still today, mankind has not developed a piece of micro precision engineering to match a watch, a mechanical watch. Sure. It is still our finest micro precision piece of engineering in the realms of mankind. Well, that's pretty impressive stuff, isn't it? And then when you, yes, you begin to befriend people like Roger Smith um, and you get to know the level of skill and problem solving that somebody like Roger applies, it's just incredible. And, um, you know, this is a world that um, if you ever get bored with watchmaking, it's it's like Samuel Johnson's old line about London, then you're bored with life, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Terry, really do you want to give us a close up of your watch? I'll put you full screen if you want. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a try. Uh, so I have the. I have it on a distressed leather. Can I? Close 
Well, full mm. logo as well. That's the C63 GMT. Yeah. Yeah. As as Mike Apparently. said, yeah. I gave it a chance and uh, I never looked back. Looked. So I have s several on order and I'm constantly looking. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you got me hooked. <laughs> well, I, I'm pleased. Um, uh, if not for you, certainly for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, honest, yeah. very honest. Thing. Yeah, really, okay. Sure. We're, we're, we're right, a bit got, short on time, guys. Yeah, we've got okay. one more yeah, question. Last question, you, and it's yeah, all right. Sure. And then we want to say yeah, goodbye without just putting the stream uh, off. We, Thank you. We, Thanks, Cherish. Oh, that's fine. Uh, this would be pretty quick because we kind of covered it. What steps, uh, if any, are being taken to increase the brand recognition here in the United States? We talked about, you know, the television and things like that. Are you doing anything else? Well, as I mentioned, the 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 type with Everton is um, is is pretty significant mm -hmm. in the U.S. You, Everton um, punched above their weight in the U.S. largely because of a stream of American players who've played for Everton, uh, including mo most recently Tim Howard, who was the Everton goalkeeper who formerly played for Manchester United. So Everton have big brand recognition in the U.S. Good. and NBC have just signed a two point seven billion pound deal. Um, to show Premier League games live. Oh, um, I thought it was um, with you. <laughs> so um, the Premier League is going to get bigger and bigger in the United States. We'll be Understood. a part of that. Um, and we're constantly looking to um, improve our digital footprint in the US. And we are working increasingly with a number of um, of YouTubers, of bloggers, etc. cetera. And, um, mm -hmm. Spreading the ward is um, is what it's about. <laughs> Excellent. Well, spreading the ward. Well, very, very spreading the ward. That, that is well spread the ward, ward people. <laughs> what, a, what a hot line. Well, that thank you brilliant. very much. That, it's, uh, just before we go, I might as well just show that. I said, I put the full screen if possible, pal, and you can do. Yep. Sure, Please, sure uh, thing. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 my ah. that's my favourite one. That, I love that. Nice. That is good. I've also got a seat. I've got a three one, a yellow. Yeah. Yeah, I've got three one six yellow three one six L and a Malvern three as well. So, uh, and I'm on Brilliant. always on the hunt for more. I'm after a, a bronze, uh, blue bronze hombre, plus a super Fantastic. compressor, plus anything else that comes. Wow! Out. Oh, yeah! Wow! 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 <laughs> yeah. And thank you. Got, thank, no, seriously, oh, thank got you. Got one more. Thank oh, he's got one more there. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> the one I've got. I'm sending back. That's the one I'm sending back next week, which oh. I've had on. Um, I've had a loan from Alex, which the month. 36 mil. Yeah, the yeah, 36 yeah. mil. Yeah, great, great watch. Beautiful. Six, yeah. six great a lot watch. bigger. Six a lot bigger than the 36 mil deserves to sit. It really does. Very impressive how how it sits on a wrist. Yeah, yeah. It, it it does. It's uh, it's uh, it's a nice look. Look. Yeah. And I'm in a fortunate um, position where I can rock anything from a 36 to a uh, 55 and a half mil G shot, uh, which is about the maximum limit. But I seem to be able to rock anything in between, so I'm, so I'm that, quite happy so, with so, that. So that's not a six inch wrist, then I'm looking at no. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm only short, but I've got I've got I've got fat chunky wrists. So I've got about a seven and a, a seven and a quarter wrist, which is pretty good. So yeah, I cool. can just about handle that. It's brilliant, right? Okay, guys, we'll wrap this up. I said, listen. Mike, it's been absolutely fantastic to have you on. You were you were a Excellent. superb guest. You really great to talk to. Um, I'm going to be waving the flag on this channel with people. Christopher Ward, uh, for the last two years, I've been doing these channels. That people will know, Thank and Thank you. you know, because I really do believe in the brand. And um, as I said, now uh, Red and Cherish, they both got the 40 mil uh, special edition Facebook one ordered. They both ordered it while they were on, while I was going on about it. They both went online and ordered it. Yeah. <laughs> you have converted me. I just haven't pulled the trigger. That's all. <laughs> I feel absolutely responsible for spending their money for that that red watch because I told them about it. We, we may have to put you on commission, John. <laughs> I'm I'm sure, you, I think I'm, you should actually. Yeah, I think you should. I tell you what, I'm I'm quite happy with doing a deal like that because I, yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I think I'll, I'll also be very interested to get your guys' views of the new Trident. Um, Pro 300 that we're launching uh, on the 25th uh, of August. Yeah, that's mm. what yeah. I've got that. I've got coming soon, and we're going to be doing a, a pre-record on the uh, on the launch up at the panel, and that will be launched the day the embargo finishes, the morning of the Brilliant. 10th. As soon as the I mean, website yeah, goes I, live, I, I, I shall watch that one. I'm really interested to hear what you guys are. I did watch. That, um, yeah. I did watch your show um, uh, where you discussed the um, the 63. Um, 
36 mils, yeah. um, which I found very interesting. So, Good, excellent. excellent. We try, enjoyed it. We try, yeah, thank you for watching that. We, uh, we, we try and do our best here, uh, here on the ticker show. Right, so I'm going to wrap this up, guys. So I'll just uh, run the VT. So thank you so much, Mike, for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. pleasure to have you. Uh, thank, thank you to my panel, as always, for supplying some excellent questions and getting engaged. And all you guys, this video should hit the um, should hit tonight in YouTube at it'll be ten thirty GMT plus one when it goes uh, goes live. That's going to be watching it. So I'll just run the uh, the VT. And remember to spread the word. Yeah, <laughs> yes, spread the word. Spread the word. The new, the new thirty six mil uh, at the moment is sold out in Lucerne Blue. Um, it sold out very very quickly. But all about, to se all about to sell out in yellow and green as well. Really? So, there yeah. you go. The man told you himself, go out and get you one. You know, you know it makes sense, right? <laughs> I will just, I will just. Thank you very much, uh, and good good night, everybody. Good night, good night everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you, thank you, Mike. Thanks,